Look to your neighbor and say, I praise you. Yes. Well, you're talking about praising God, aren't you? Jesus said, know ye not that ye are gods? Come on now, act like you know something. And joy, joy to the world, that's why he showed up in the first place. You know, earlier in the month, I was talking about some of the trials and tribulations of the Jews. <laughs> well, you know how compassionate God is. God said, look, I got something for you. Y'all need some joy up in here. And then he brought through Jesus the Christ. I know that Christ is not a last name. I know that Christ is the very essence of who Jesus is. But I know that this is true not only for Jesus, but for each one of us. And so now when everybody can settle down for the word, then I'll go ahead with it. How's that? So just giving thanks for what Christ means. I'm going to read the definition from the science of mind. It says, the word of God manifests in and through man, woman. In a liberal sense, the Christ means the entire manifestation of God and is therefore the second person of the Trinity. Christ is universal idea and each one puts on the Christ to the degree that he or she surrenders a limited sense of life to the divine realization of wholeness and unity with good spirit God. I'm even going to break down the definition for you because I want to make sure that you get why you are Christ. Okay? And so the word, first of all, the word Christmas is Christ and Spanish for more is mas. Okay, so it's a call for more Christ in the world. It's a call for more Christ for every, every one of us, each and every one of us. Now, that means you are the word of God. What does the word mean? You are the life energy of God. Remember in the beginning was the word. So that's the activity that started everything, the source, the cause. And so therefore, when you say the word of God is manifest in and through man, woman, you know, they were a little gender challenged back in the day. So I have to augment that, you know, but you are God made manifest. Say to your neighbor, you are God made manifest. Most of y'all looking like you don't believe that stuff. Really? Oh, that means I'm going to be up here for two hours. Until I know that you know that you know who you are. Because really, it's one thing to mouth off those words, but it's another thing to actually be able to embrace that fully and completely. And, and this is why Jesus came to be an example. It wasn't supposed to be, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus is all of this. It was supposed to be Jesus did it, so can I. Jesus was it, so am I. Because he looked like the rest of us pretty much in terms of having arms and legs and, 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 and feet and fingers and all those kinds of things, same as we do. But he says... In a liberal sense, the Christ means the entire manifestation of God. So, so can you see God in the animals? Can you, see animal, can you see God in the birds, in the fish? Can you see God in everything that has life in the flowers? Can you see God in the plants that you're eating? Understand in the Kabbalah when it talks about this communion with God being our meal, you know? You know, some people just like try to say the shortest Bible verse that they can in order to get to the meal, Jesus wept. <laughs> and, and that ought to tell you that they're not willing or ready to be in a real communion state of mind. But this is what we're talking about. We're talking about being at one minute with the source of all that is. Nobody has to tell a lily to, to not toil. Nobody has to tell a rose to not open with grace. 
This is who you are naturally. You are naturally grace. You are naturally beauty. I don't just say this, these words to the new visitors because it's something nice to say. I say it because it's the truth of who they are. Your love, your intelligence. You're the way that God gets around. You're the way that God reveals itself. And so now, this universal idea of the Christ and this definition of Christ, saying putting on the Christ means to surrender a limited sense. Say to your neighbor, surrender a limited sense, limited sense. Of, life. of life. Oh, breathe that in. Oh, y'all got to breathe that in because you got to surrender to that limited sense of life for real, for real. If you think that you are limited to any set of circumstances, if you think that you are limited to any particular income, if you think that you are limited to any kind of relationship, if you think that you are limited to any kind of health condition, you are in error. Okay? The truth is that you are the I am. I am the I am, as Reverend Anthony was saying in the meditation. The breath of God is breathing me, and that is the breath of God that I am breathing. And so understand that we are in communion all the time. Together we are one with God. And so we're celebrating that at one moment. And that at one moment is that truth of oneness that we get to celebrate, we get to embody each and every day of our lives. It's a wonderful thing to really look at who we are as God and, 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 and have it as an opportunity to embrace wholeness. Because we spend way too much talk time talking about being a victim. We spend way too much time talking about what's going wrong. We spend way too much time talking about what had happened. Okay? We spend way too much time being depressed and repressed and not expressed. Okay? But I want you to express I want you to X out those limited thoughts. I want you to X out that limited sense of what life is. You hear me live streamers? I want you to X out any idea that there is anything at all limited about God. It's a lie. And don't you dare let anybody tell you otherwise. How do I know this? Because the United States Senate finally called lynching a federal crime after 200 years. This week, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. There's no time in God. There's no time to say, oh, it must happen within this particular moment. It is up to us to be in our evolution to say yes to the evolving of our soul so that we may manifest that which we are calling forth in the deepest, sweetest part of our being where our God presence lives, moves, and has its beingness. It is important for you to be able to embrace joy in order for you to be able to give joy to the world. You can't give nothing that you don't have. And I'm, what I want you to know is this kind of power that Jesus had, and, and Ernest Holmes talks about it. He talks about the ways that spiritual things need to be spiritually discerned and how Jesus discerned spiritual truth. You don't just look at the appearances. The appearances is just the cover. And you know you don't judge a book by its cover. You need to open it up and see what's in there. If you are confronted with a challenge, it's time for you to go beyond what it looks like and say, what does God have for me in here? That's like opening up a Christmas present. And the shiny wrapper may be something that you want to open. And maybe you don't want to open up that present that's open in newspaper, but you don't know what's in there. You don't know until you dive in and just begin to see what God has in store for you. He has it wrapped many different kind of ways. She has mysterious ways of revealing it to you. And I'm telling you, they, male and female created we them, that I am, had to be both female and male in order for us to be what we are. 
So, Jesus had such a power, but it's not a power that we don't have, okay? Here's what I say in Divine Workplay. Quoting Charles Fillmore, we cannot come unto the Father which art in heaven except through our own spiritual nature. How are you going to hear God unless you are tapped into your spirit? That's it. You know, we always want to say, we want to talk to God. We want to tell God. It's like, well, well, you know, I'm not going to be standing there having a conversation with somebody that I can't see. Are you? You know, because they got white jackets for that. They got nice cushiony rooms for that. But, but really, you have to know that you're making a connection with something real. And not just something that's a figment of your imagination that sounds nice to say so that you look spiritual to your friends. This is not what this is about, people. This particular faith, this particular philosophy, this particular way of life is not for sissies. And that means sissies in the greatest sense in terms of not simply for somebody who wants to give up or somebody that wants somebody to save them and do it for them. It's not for that. It's for standing in your divine power. It's for standing in your divine truth. It's for embracing your Christhood. It's for you realizing who you are and the substance from which you are made. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. There's some people around here that know something about something. That's why they're in classes. Divine Workplay goes on to say, as the human gives way to the divine in a person, he, she becomes the Christ. Giving way to the divine is not fighting back and insisting on there being a certain thing in a certain way. You know, some people have to say goodbye to somebody and want to want to be mad with God because somebody shuffled off the mortal coil. This is not about being here forever in the earth plane. This is not the main act. This is this the this is just the preview for the rest of your greatness and the rest of your joy to be revealed and fulfilled. So understand not to take this at all lightly. Because just like any school that you go into, you go into there looking for some answers to some questions and leaving there with more than you came with. And so in this soul's journey, you have to know that you need to get what you came to get before you get up out of here. And that is the invitation. And so in Divine Workplay, I go on to say that the cosmic Christ is not a person but a principle. Say it's principle. A principle is an eternal truth. There is nothing that can stop it. There is nothing that can end it at any way, at any time, by anyone. Principles are eternal truths. So in Jesus, the com cosmic Christ was fully realized. So it's not limited to a particular time in history. It's not limited to a particular person. Now, the Christ is eternal because it is spirit's self-knowingness. What does it mean, spirit's self-knowingness? That's, oh my goodness, oh, I love who I am. Oh, I think I'm going to create Rebecca. Oh, God, God is my name. My nature must be something beautiful like Lisa. Oh, my God, as that's my name. My nature must be revealed as Yesufu. Oh, God, I am so loved. I must reveal myself as Anthony. So understand that each one of us is an incarnation of this truth, of this principle, of this life energy. And as individualized expressions, you're not expected to be like somebody else. So don't expect somebody else to be like you. Did you get it? Do I need to repeat it? Don't expect somebody to be the carbon copy of you. God is more creative than that. God is creativity itself. I guess I better start looking at the clock so I know where I am. Here's the thing. Something needed to happen. 
God, God said, you know what, Mary? I need you to do something for me. I need you to come through. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know anything about, you know, wasn't like that, 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 that character in, in Gone with the Wind, because I, I, I screamed when I heard it, when I finally saw it in the movie theater. I don't know nothing about birth no babies. I was like, no. But I imagine that Mary had a similar reaction. You know, because they say she was a virgin. And I mean, you know, there are virgins in the world. You don't need to deny that. And, 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 and there are times when we are virgins in our experiences and that it's time for us to birth something new. And so as we let go of 2018, we're being invited to birth something new. And so if you just want your life to be the same way it has been, tired and ugly and contentious, you know, then, then, then you're ready for something called death. You're not ready for life. But see, death is never, never an ending either. It's only a beginning. You're ready for that to die so something new could be born. Yeah, God said, pull out your tarot cards this morning. I'm like, really? I'm like, okay, fine. So I put them all out, make sure that, you know, I could see every one of them, and I didn't look. I just reached in and picked one. Guess what card came up? Death. No, oh, don't, 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 don't start going, <gasps> no. That does not mean I'm going to die. It means I need rest. Oh, y'all didn't get that. Right, that's why I'm getting on the plane today. I got to leave town to get rest, don't you know? Anyway. The, the thing is, the Christhood didn't die on that cross. The Christhood isn't something that we, we need to, to die to meet again. The Christhood is available to us right here, right now. Oh, and Joseph, Joseph was like, what you mean she pregnant? <laughs> Ain't mine. <laughs> you know how y'all do. <laughs> Not anybody here, just some people, you know. <laughs> but it was calling for something to be birthed in Joseph too. Just like Mary's faith was, was needed to be birthed even greater. She was a devout person and she was absolutely into God and God was into her to the extent that she could say, yes, there's a way that I can go even deeper in my yes. And, and Joseph, he was like, ah, oh, this is hard. You know, you're going to be embarrassing me in front of my friends, in front of my family and all of this because, you know, I'm going to you know, be marrying this woman. And what's this look like? And if that wasn't enough, they had a long way to go. And baby, listen, your turbo car is not a donkey, okay? Even if you got roller skates or a skateboard, your feet having to travel those many miles on a terrain that is not cement, on a terrain that is rocky and hilly, means that it's time for you to go on a journey that is not smooth and easy. So don't, don't, don't curse your challenges. Welcome them because they're part of you rising up into a new understanding of who you are as your Christ emerges. And so it's going to take some travel for you to get to your Christ if you don't know who you are already. And, and, and ask for prayer because it doesn't have to be hard. But understand that when you are willing to make that journey, that the blessings will be greater than you could have imagined. Oh, and in this light season, there had to be somebody coming from the east. There had to be somebody coming from that place of wisdom. What you say in your sacred covenant, there has to be wisdom. They were still enough to say, I'm feeling like we need to follow that star. I think that light has some information for us. I'm ready to go on this journey. I think there's a king being called for. I hear the word Christ and I, I think that means king. Let's go see what this is about.
And so as they traveled on their way, they continued to think that, well, if, if, if there's a, a king to be had, perhaps we need to go see Herod. And Herod was like, what you talking about? I didn't ask you to come. And they were like, yeah, yeah this don't seem like where we're supposed to be. He's like, well, yeah, well, you find out who that is. You let me know, you know. There are people who know how to use the law for good. And there are people who know how to use the law for not so good. And understand that in this awareness, we want to embrace the goodness of God. And not the Herod type of, 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 of using the law to kill, to, to hurt somebody. Not, not, not the way, oh God, not the way it started with Willie Horton and George H.W. Bush creating this criminal justice system that was making people modern day slaves and keeping people pris in prison for things like throwing a piece of paper on the ground. I know I'm exaggerating, but you know, a joint does not deserve 20 years. I'm just saying. Somebody had to come to an understanding that there was something that wasn't quite right. There was, there was something that I heard somebody say about justice rolling down like rivers. And I'm knowing that there was something that continued to be awakened as person after person of color started to join our Congress and females after females started to join our Congress because I know that that's what made it possible. I knew something was up when I was in D.C. with, yes, a million women. The day after something happened, I don't know, not too many people were there. <laughs> then an enlightenment grew. It became unavoidable and unarguable to say that this is not who we are. Regardless of what anybody says, something in me knows that justice does not look like this. So these wise men did find their way and they did bring gifts to the king. These are evolved beings who come from the east. Their wisdom led them to bring franken frankincense. They bring frankincense to those who are of the priesthood. They bring frankincense to those who have a stature as a spiritual leader. They bring frankincense to those who are teachers. They bring frankincense for strength and protection. See, frankincense helps us to focus on our spiritual consciousness. And for any human being that is seeking to know their Christhood, they knew that he was going to need to focus on his spiritual consciousness. So they brought him what he needed. Say to your neighbor, they brought him what he needed. See, just like when they asked you what you wanted for Christmas, I'm sure you told them what you needed. I started off saying what I wanted, then I said, let me get real, let me just ask for what I need. Because I might go for what I want rather than going for what I need at the wrong time. Anyway, this wise group, you know, wise gang, gang of men from the East, they brought what was needed. Because, see, bringing Bringing frankincense and myrrh are, are really by, about bringing spiritual transcendence. Are you ready to transcend spiritually? Yeah. I don't believe you. Are you ready to transcend spiritually? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know who answered that time. It was your spirit. To, to bring the, the Christ spiritual transcendence, that means this may look really bad, but my spirit knows that I will overcome this. My spirit is the overcomer. My spirit is able to look beyond this appearance and to rise up beyond what it looks like into what is my good. Now, 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 Frankincense also, frankincense and myrrh also brings peace. 
You know, you need peace to walk a spiritual journey in earnest. You really do. Because to know that you can be still and listen requires peace. You can't get to spiritual transcendence in the middle of confusion and chaos. That's why we need to bring order to our affairs. So understand that when you are moving towards helping someone with a spiritual awareness, a transcendent awareness, and so that they can detach from the surface, from the materialism, from that, you know, which is temporal, and be focused on that which is eternal. And so let the personality integrate with the higher self. You know, we spend a lot of time on our personality, thinking that that's who we are because we haven't yet spiritually transcended to integrate with our higher self. Say to your neighbor, integrate with our higher self. That's the upper room Homer would talk about. You know, you, you, let me take you higher. You know, I know you thought Sly Stone was talking about some acid or something. No. When he was like, let me take you higher. You know, come to think of it, I, d I did do some acid one time, and it did bring me into a very interesting awareness of things that I wouldn't have had if I was just sober seeing. And that was back in the 70s. But anyway, so, so, so understand that you want to transcend, not just until the high comes down. You want to transcend so that it lasts a lifetime, so that it, it catapults you into a lifetime that you want to live in joy. Yes? They, 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 they brought him myrrh. Myrrh is what unites heaven and earth. Myrrh is that aspect of, of, of this wonderful spiritual consciousness that allows you to be able to gracefully release this death that you were inevitably headed toward and to be able to embrace the new life that is awaiting you. You see why he needed myrrh? They already knew that part of his divine destiny was to be able to die to something that was in order to raise something that will be and is already inherent in each one of us as the Christ's. And so this myrrh calms the mind and instills tranquility. This myrrh lets you just rest so that you're not too afraid for the challenging journey that is before you. Because you know something in you has to die in order for something greater to be made manifest through you. You can't do it with your little girl panties on. You've got to put on your big girl drawers in, able, in order to be able to transcend your lower personality and integrate with your higher self. See, y'all know I'm not playing. Because I, I'm, I'm, I want to go. And I don't want to go by myself. I want everybody. Right? So, so, so they brought them gold. And most people think that's about prosperity, and that's good. You know, another word of saying, way of saying that is comfort. You know, because people can have a whole lot of money and be very uncomfortable. They look around and everybody in their cabinet's resigning. They look around and even the person that's supposed to be responsible for keeping peace on this hemisphere is gone. It's a good thing we know God, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Let me close this up. Let me tell you something. You want comfort. You want peace. You want spiritual transcendence. That's why you want more Christ. You want more Christ because the wise ones, Divine Workplace says, the wise ones are open to the inner resources of spirit. The wise ones are stirred by a great spiritual revelation. Some may call it intuition. And so during this time of the year, we catch the vibration of giving more freely. Perhaps because it's programmed in the TV, perhaps because we see it online, but perhaps there's something else. 
Perhaps in this season of darkness, as we, as we just got through embracing the solstice a couple of days ago, in this season of darkness, a greater light is being called for. And in order for us to have some kind of an idea of why that light is so necessary, they decided to pretend like Jesus was born at this time of the year. And that's fine because it works if you, if you work it. Okay, so, so understand that your light is being called forth greater than it ever has been for the earlier part of this year. Your light is being called forth so that the darkness isn't something that you just get used to so that you can fade to black in the back. This is for you to be able to shine your magnificence, not just so other people can see your light, but so that you can be light and then understand that this light that you are is lifting you out of the darkness of your soul. That that light is lifting you beyond the heaviness of that seeming heavy darkness and into a lightness of being so that you can fly past the appearances that seem to keep you in a dense, limited sense of life. And so I invite you to know that moving into whatever is going on with you know, politics, whatever is going on, you know, there's something that is never weary, something that never stops. I call it omniactive. I call it omnipresence. And so I'm knowing that even in this season, as we, we seek to embrace our happiness and our fulfillment, as is our monthly theme, we are knowing that it doesn't depend on those things outside. I'm going to tell you, I'm one of those people who are late in decorating. I don't do it at Thanksgiving. I do it just before. So I was decorating up, up a storm this morning, don't you know? I'm like, why are you doing this? You're not going to be here. I'm like, I don't know. I just have to. Right? Because, because all of the busyness is over. Right? And now I can be still and know. Now I can celebrate what this is about. Brought out, you know, my, my ivory Joseph and Mary. Brought out my, my silver snowflakes. My, you know, my, my, my poinsettia place settings. I'm like, girl, ain't nobody coming over here. That's okay. That's okay. Brought out a couple of those beautiful boxes left over from my birthday and my installation. Ain't nothing in them, but they look so pretty. I said, you know what? <laughs> this looks like a day fit for a king. I think I'm enjoying being the Christ today. I invite you to, too. Namaste.